Hi and welcome to another episode of Reaper TV. In this video I'm going to show you the fundamentals of working with tracks in Reaper. Now you may be new to Reaper or been working with it for some time, but it's still worth sticking around as you may pick up a tip or two from the content in the video. Now if you are new to Reaper then you're going to love how easy and flexible it is to work with tracks inside Reaper. So let's take a look at that right now. Now if there's one area of Reaper that can cause some confusion to new users or those moving over to Reaper from an alternative digital audio workstation like Pro Tools is the way in which tracks work. Now in a program like Pro Tools you specifically choose a track type when you create a new track so for example a stereo track or a MIDI track whereas in Reaper you simply create a track. Now there's no need to choose a stereo track, a mono track or any other kind of track and once you've created it, you can simply choose the input method, for example, one channel, stereo, MIDI, etc. And then you're done. So pretty straightforward. Now this video is going to cover a lot of different tools and a lot of different options and ways of creating and working with tracks. Obviously, if you've got something you know yourself works really, really well, share that in the comment section below so we can all pick up some new tips and tricks. But let's take a look at how we can start working with this from the basics of just creating a track. Now when you start working with Reaper, one of the things you'll pick up is the fact that it's incredibly customizable and there are multiple ways of achieving the same end result. So how you get to it is entirely up to you and whatever feels the most intuitive. So let's start off by creating a track. Now we're going to cover four methods in this. We're going to start off with the simple and easiest method, which is just come up to the track control panel, which is this section on the left hand side, and double clicking. And you can see that now inserts a new track for us. So a quick and easy way of doing it. We can also do exactly the same thing by coming down to the mixer control panel, which is this main area at the bottom of the screen. So you can double click, there's our new track, all very simple. We can all use, also use the keyboard shortcut of control or command and T. And again, you can see we now create a new track. We can also go in for the final method and right click and choose insert new track. So again, you can see very quick, very easy. Now if you're the kind of person that likes to work with a menu system, then you can do exactly the same thing there. You can come up to track and you can see we have insert new track. So there we go. Various different methods of achieving the same end result of creating a track. Now to delete a track, again, we've got multiple ways of doing the same thing. We can select the track we want to remove and simply press the delete key. That deletes that track for us. Or we can select the track and we can right click and we can come down and we can say remove tracks. And you can see the track is now gone. Alternatively, we can click on the track itself, come to the track menu, and from there we can say remove tracks. So you can see, all very quick, very easy, all pretty intuitive. And that's great if we want to insert single tracks or delete single tracks. But how about if we want to create or delete multiple tracks? Well, Reaper's got us covered on that one as well. So if we want to insert multiple tracks, we can simply come up to the track control panel on the left hand side, right click and say insert multiple tracks. That brings up a simple dialog box that says how many tracks do you want to insert? Do you want to name them? Do you want to put them after the last touch track or at the end of the project? So you can see we've got a couple of options. So let's create three new tracks in there and we leave everything else as it is except for the at the end of the project. Click on there. There's our three new tracks. Very simple. Quick way of doing that. What if we want to get rid of those tracks? Well, we can do that quite easily. We can select the tracks we want. So let's just say we want these three. Then we can right click and we can come down and say remove tracks. And there we go. There's our tracks removed. Now we're not limited to just that method. If we want to, we can select the tracks we want and then we can just press the delete key. And again, there's our tracks removed. So as you can see, multiple ways of achieving the same end result. Now as you start to work with the project in Reaper, you're going to find there's instances where you want to duplicate a track. Now, there are multiple reasons why you might want to do this. You might want to double up on a particular part. You may want to just take a track, don't need the actual content of the track itself, but you like the way the effects parameters and everything is set up. So instead of how to recreate that, you can quickly just duplicate the track. So let's take a look at how we can do that next. Let's just create a new track and give this a name. So we're going to call this Sample 1. And we'll just apply something to it. So let's just come at the effects panel and we'll just choose anything from there. It doesn't really matter too much what it is. We'll add an instance of easy keys in. We we'll close that down. So we've now got a track that has some information on it. You can see we've named it. We've got applied an effects to it. Well, we can select that track and we can right click and we can say duplicate tracks. And you can see once we do that, we get an identical duplicate named the same with the same effects on there. So if we open that up, you can see there's our instance of easy keys. Now we can delete that if we want to. 
And we can do the same thing again now, do a different method. So we can select the track we want, then we can go up to the track menu, and from there we can say duplicate tracks. Give it a couple of seconds, and there we go, it loads that in. Now, if you notice, it says duplicate tracks, as in plural. So we can do exactly that. Let's just say we select these two tracks, and we do either of those methods. It doesn't really matter. So let's do the right-click method. So right-click on there, and we say duplicate tracks. We now end up with four copies of the same track. So four instances of the same track with the same effects, with the same name, and so on. So a quick and easy way of being able to take the source track and duplicate it a number of times. So now that we've taken a look at how to create tracks, let's take a look at the track types. So as I said at the top of this video, Reaper doesn't force us to create a specific track format when we create it, but we do have to assign some basics to each track. Now we can pick between a normal mono track, a stereo track, or a MIDI track, and these are the majority of the track types you'll be using in a typical project. So let's see how easy it is to assign a track type right now. So let's start off with a mono track. Now a mono track is what you'd normally use for a guitar or a vocal, but it can have many different uses. Now to do this, we simply need to ensure that we set the correct input. So if we click on the input type for a track, we'll select track 1 first of all, we can choose the input type from the list. You can see we have mono, stereo, midi and none. So what we need to do is ensure that we choose the right format. So in my instance, I need to set this to channel 1 and 2. So you can see it's already set up, that's the default. So using this allows me to record using the first input on my audio interface. As this is the default value, I simply need to arm the track and start recording when my line level instrument, a guitar or mic for example, is inserted. So as you can see, there's a mono recording. So as you can see, by simply just choosing one channel, we now have this recording in mono. To record in stereo, it's pretty straightforward. So to create a stereo track, all I need to do is set the track input to be stereo and choose the second input from my interface. Arm the track, hit record, and now we have a stereo input. So let's take a look at that. So we're going to choose sample track, and we're going to come onto there, and you can see at the moment we have it set to mono using the default values. If I come out to stereo, you can see that defaults to both of the values of my sort of two-channel input interface. If you have more, you'll have different options available in here, but you can choose any of those two adjacent tracks. So, let's choose that. And now if we start to hit record and start to record something, we'll now have a stereo track. Some guitar and some vocals at the same time, giving us a stereo track. So as you can see, it's pretty easy to create both mono and stereo tracks in Reaper. So next, let's move on to MIDI and see how we can work with that. So, working with MIDI and Reaper is a little different, but the basics are pretty much the same. However, you have two options when it comes to creating a MIDI track. You can right-click the TCP or the Track Control Panel and select Insert Virtual Instrument on New Track, and this will immediately create a MIDI track for you. So, if we come down onto an empty area, right-click and say Insert Virtual Instrument, Click on there, that'll ask us what's the virtual instrument you want to use. So we're just going to choose Easy Drummer for this. Actually, let's do Easy Keys because it's easier. Just double click, that now inserts that in there for us, and we now have an instance of Easy Keys all set up with the right MIDI channels and everything configured for us. This is great. And if we're working with something like a drum sequencing software that may maybe uses 8 or 16 channels, it's a very quick way of being able to create all those multiple channels simultaneously. But that's moving on a little bit too far ahead for now, just to know that if you want to, you can use that method. The second method, let's just delete that, is to actually assign this to become a MIDI track. So where we've got the input and output like we did earlier on, we took a look at setting that to be mono and stereo, we can do the same kind of thing with MIDI. So to do this, all you need to do is select the input to use your specific MIDI device. So we come up to the arrow, you can see we have input MIDI, and anything that's available to play MIDI on your interface or your setup, however you've got things configured, is option in here to go and choose to assign that. So for this example, I'm going to use all MIDI inputs, and I'm going to say all channels. That now creates a MIDI channel, and you can see, or MIDI track, and you can see now that's assigned everything in there. So if we come up to this, and we wanted to just select this small area and insert some MIDI in there, we can click. That now creates a placeholder for our MIDI, and if we double click on there, we can start adding our MIDI information into it, and start sequencing our software. 
Now, a useful little trick at this point is if you are dealing with a MIDI sequencing package, for example, Easy Keys, that has its own MIDI tracks in there, we can start to utilize those without having to have the interface itself open. So I just want to show you this. This is a little bit of a bonus tip, shall we say. So we've got Easy Keys set up on this track. So let's just open that up. And as you can see, Easy Keys ships with a whole ton of MIDI information, MIDI libraries and so on. And this works the same with things like Superior Drummer, Easy Drummer, and a whole range of different MIDI-based applications. So what we can do is, we've got this piece of MIDI information as part of a track. If I want to use that and start working with that without having to have Easy Keys open, I can simply come over to this MIDI information, drag it up onto a MIDI track, and you can see once I let go, I'll close this down you can see that MIDI information is now inside there and we can start manipulating it so if I wanted to I can double click on that that'll open up our MIDI editor we'll switch it over to make sure we're in the sort of the keyboard view and we'll specify that we're going to be dealing with piano roll so you can see all our notes and information is all there so we can start editing this and doing whatever we want with it but all inside Reaper itself as opposed to having to have easy keys open so pretty cool very useful especially when you want to start building up MIDI information pulling it from libraries and so on and using that as the basis for the song or the piece of audio that you're working with so there we go, that's pretty much what I wanted to cover in this video. It's all about showing you different ways of creating tracks, assigning different kinds of audio you want to work with, and just showing you the many ways that Reaper offers you for creating and working with tracks. Now there's tons and tons of other things that I could show you when it comes to this, and we'll move on to more advanced topics in a future video, but for now, this is great just to show you exactly how you can work with tracks in Reaper. Well, I hope you found the video useful. If you did, please hit the subscribe button to be kept up to date with all the new content we add. Give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, a thumbs down if you didn't. If you have any comments, questions or feedback on this video, or as I said at the top of the video, you've got any ideas or suggestions on how you work with tracks inside Reaper, pop those in the comments section below and share the knowledge and the skills with everybody else. Well, until next time, take care.